I'm going I'm to kick off this afternoon session, and I'm going to talk about the global fight for internet trust. Sounds like something that was ripped out of a Kevin Mitnick uh, or a Neil Stevenson book, but this is a real fight that is currently going on for the internet trust, and all of you, I would imagine, are users of the internet, and I'm sure all of you are interested to know where you want to place your trust for the protection of websites. So as a cybersecurity auditor, I'm in the middle of it. And this presentation is discussing questions of fairness and governance and the fight for the reputation of global enterprises. All right? So just a little bit about me, Scott Perry. I am a PECB partner. My focus mostly, predominantly in the last 12 years, is I am an auditor of internet trust anchors. And so in this presentation, I'm going to get all of you oriented on what an internet trust anchor is and talk to you a little bit about the governance of, of those trust anchors. People in the audience, are you familiar with the fight, the spat, I don't know, between Google and Symantec? Can I have a raise hands? Just a couple of folks. So I will orient you all to uh, what that fight is about because now it is reaching, I don't know if it, it didn't reach the front pages of magazines and newspapers, but it, it did hit the airwaves. And, and now it is becoming more publicly known about the fact that Google is making accusations against Symantec, specifically for the misissuing of 30,000 HTTPS certs, okay? And Chrome, its browser, to immediately stop recognizing EV status and gradually nullifying all certs. So what is all of that? I'm going to explain what that is and why that's very, very important, really, and, and extremely important to Symantec, where their survival of their business of issuing certificates are really being threatened at this time. By the way, one thing I want to say, I don't know if all of you know about taking someone to the woodshed, and so there is a picture of a woodshed actually associated with that. I thought that was pretty crazy on that. So when, when an organization gets threatened, how do they respond? And right now, they're being threatened, and they are, they are being accused, and there's no court that's currently in the, in the internet. But they have to defend themselves, because since, as it's stating here, since 2015, Google decided to distrust the company's class three public and primary CA root certificate. And I'm gonna talk about why that's important and a threat to their existence as an internet trust anchor. And so uh, what they did, and actually it, it turned out to be in the March, April timeframe, is that they made a claim that 30,000 uh, server certificates were not validated appropriately. And I'm going to talk about what the certificates are and talk about what validation happens uh, by these trust anchors to validate that certificates are appropriate before they get issued. So, and what's interesting also is that, I don't know if you're aware, but the Google and Symantec our, their headquarters are literally across the street from each other, and they are in a global fight. It's just crazy. So let me, let me just start with some orientation to get all of you on the same page. Okay, so all of you are internet users, correct? And all of you go to different websites, and you all, you know, sometimes you'll see in the browser bar, you'll see HTTP or you'll see HTTPS, and sometimes you'll say, oh, look, it says secure. What does that mean? And what it means is that if a 
website is protected by a server certificate, whatever, whatever type it is, it will show that it is secure and from the browser to the server, the traffic will be encrypted, okay? Now, who issues these server certificates? You're all familiar with the browsers. They're very familiar to you. You have Microsoft, you have Google, Apple, Mozilla. But you may or may not be familiar with a term called the certification authorities. And basically, certification authorities came into existence uh, in the 1990s uh, after SSL was a protocol that was issued by uh, Netscape Navigator. And so they needed to have trust entities that would issue certificates that could actually encrypt traffic using that protocol. And back in the early 90s, companies like VeriSign, Thought, uh, GeoTrust, all three actually were acquired by Symantec, uh, were in existence, and there were so there were a bunch. There were many players. Now today, it depends on where you know what survey you're looking for, because every certification authority would say we are issuing the largest number of certificates on the internet. But this this marketplace, and these are my potential clients, because I audit certification authorities. That's my one of my primary businesses. These are public. I also do uh, private and semi-private. And so if you look at the numbers here, you'll see that two players are covering half of the market share. Four players are covering two-thirds of the market share, and seven players basically dominate three-quarters of the market share. It's an oligopoly. And so, you know, and they are, they are fiercely competitive with each other. And believe me, all of these other organizations, they see there's blood in the water for Symantec, and they are going after them. If you go to the Komodo website, the front page will say, Google doesn't trust Symantec, come to us. And so it's an interesting marketplace as, as it's dealing with it. And so um, how are these organizations governed? You know, what are the protocols and such. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but the governance of these organizations started in the mid-90s when the American Bar Association of any of all things had grabbed the, the uh, internet security experts of the time and they created digital signature guidelines which eventually got developed into the governance and, and criteria that I'm going to talk about later in this presentation. So one of the things also is there was an enterprising engineer that decided I'm going to go and do a topo topographical map of all of the websites and what company issued those website security certificates and they came out with a map. And I thought it was just so interesting that someone would do that that I decided it would be entertaining to add that to this presentation. So this is somebody's enterprising view of, of a topo Actually, I think it's internet security art. So I'd say, what, what do you think this looks like? Where, where's, where's my plant? What does it look like? Where's Juan? You said, Yvonne, you said you were going to tell, tell me what it looked like. So, so my view is it kind of looks like a, it looks like a lion or a tiger. I don't know. It's, he's got his mouth. He's got his tongue sticking out. And, but basically, it shows, the, it shows the oligopoly here. It says there's a couple of these that are main players. And uh, I think if you're in the back, you probably have a better view of uh, what it looks like. So to get into uh, the different flavors of certificates that uh, are placed into websites, there are three flavors. DV, which is domain validated. OV, which is organizational validation, and EV, which is extended validation. Remember, EV was what uh, uh, Google was saying, we're not going to trust any EV search from Symantec. And we'll talk about how that's important. Now, the, the, the differences between these types of certificates are what they validate before 
what the certification authority validates prior to issuing the certificate. You can see the differences there. Also, how it's displayed on the, on the browser, as well as, of course, the different uh, levels of cost. And I'm going to go through the three flavors so you have an orientation about what is uh, attached to different websites. So if you look at Internet Explorer, it is really easy to find the certificate attached to a website. First of all, you know it has a certificate because it says HTTPS, okay? And if you want to find out where the certificate is, you just click on the padlock. And I don't know, has anyone, looked, has anyone clicked on the padlock, has seen a certificate before attached to a website? Okay, so we got some orientation. We're working through that, okay. So in this case, when I clicked on the padlock, it says GoDaddy Certification Authority, okay? And that's the one that's, that was issued the certificate for this site, scottperrycpa.com. I couldn't get it from anywhere else because actually GoDaddy is the hoster for my site. So they, they said, well, we're gonna be the ones that actually issue your certificate. And it says here, the connection to the server is encrypted. And so, you know, should I trust this site? You can check on that. And you have more information about the business that I play in. So if I clicked on the certificate, it would come up with the general tab over here. I'm, I'm loving my laser pointer right here. It's perfect. So, and it will tell you that it was issued to scottperrycpa.com. It was issued by the certification authority. And it's interesting, the validation period at this time is three years. That actually is becoming shorter. By March of 2018, all certificates, are, the validity period will be shortened to 825 days. Where they come up with that number, but it actually is gonna be two years and three months. So if I click on the certification path tab, this will lead into where the, what I would consider the trust anchors. So the certificate authority that issued the certificate to scottperrycpa.com is not the trust anchor, okay? The trust anchor is the root certification authority, and they cannot issue end-level certificates. They issue certificates to others that actually issue end certificates. And this, these, these root authorities, is the connection to the browser. And I'll show you where that is and where the fight is over that real estate. Now, I was talking to some folks over lunch, and the question that come up is, it used to be really easy to find a certificate when I'm using Chrome. And what happened to it? Well, it's interesting that Google decided to kind of hide it. You can get to the certificate, but you actually have to go and click on, let me see, more, if I can get it to it. I think it's more tools. Yeah, more tools, and which is through this, this extra connector, and then develop, developer tools, and then you get this drop down as I show, and then you can view the certificate. So even in its actions as a browser, they are masking or making it more difficult for you to even see who, the, you know, who issued certificates uh, on, on the browser. Okay, so we went through domain validation certificates. Now let me just finalize that. In order for a company to issue a, a certification authority to issue a domain validated certificate, they just have to validate that, they look at who is from, and to determine if the company has the rights to that website. That's the only validation that they are obligated to do. Now, for organizational validation certificates, in this case, it's PECB.com. They're protected by a, a certificate that was issued by Komodo Organization Validation Secure Server. Okay, and w before Komodo issued that certificate, they had to validate that PECB was a legitimate organization. Usually in the United States, they'll look at Secretary of State sites. 
uh, either in Canada, they probably go to a provincial government or national government to see if it's registered as a site and it has a valid address and a valid phone number, okay? And in this case, they, uh, this certificate is only valid for a year. That was the choice of PECB to do that. They could have gotten three years at one point, but that's gonna be shortened, as I had mentioned, to 825, so. Now, finally, we're talking about EV certs. Extended validation certificates even present themselves differently on a website. So if you see the company's name in the browser bar, then you know that they have EV cert that's protecting it. And in this case, DigiCert is a certification authority. It's one of my clients. And they issued certificates to themselves. And, they, and you know by looking at the certificate that it was issued by an extended validation server. And the, the validation period was, in fact, two years and three months, which is really the maximum that all certificates will be in the future. Now, on Internet Explorer, there is a different presentation which I think is more compelling to buyers of these certificates because they get to have a green bar uh, on the browser bar. Not only the name, but the green bar, and that, that's attractive. I mean, people are attracted to say, wow, that must be secure, that's green, that's go, it's all good. But Google doesn't do that any longer. So just, on Internet, just Microsoft does that. Now, Now, if you'd look at the certificate we pulled down for the EV cert, not only does, you know, in the details, the company actual name and their address is located inside the certificate, it gives you more assurance. So they check that the company is legitimate, okay? The address and phone number, and for EV certs, they will also validate the applicant, the person that's requesting the certificate, they will validate that that person has the rights to do so. They're an employee of the company and they're in a position to do so. So that's additional validation that's happening. And so going back to uh, my original this, you know, presentation around the fact that Symantec is being challenged to even issue EV certs. But actually what's happening in the last, since uh, March and April, there has been discussions and it looks like Symantec will be able to do that. The current proposal is that until uh, Symantec proves itself, they will right now have to uh, employ another certification authority to validate certificates and issue certificates. So that's on the table, hasn't been formally agreed to at this point, but and it bodes, you know, uh, a significant change in the way Symantec does business. So why, you know, what was the trend? How did this reach a point where there is this distrust in certification authorities? And are, you know, who's familiar with the DigiNotar hack? Okay, we have some, so I'll, I'll bring everybody up to speed with, with that. So in, in 2011, a, an individual hacker had broken into a Dutch certification authority called DigiNotar and actually uh, issued 531 rogue certificates ones that were not validated, and they happened to be attached to websites such as the Israeli Secret Service, uh, the US CIA, AOL.com, Microsoft.com. So this caused great consternation, and the biggest uh, threat was against Google. Now it's interesting, so Google with, did what they called a pinned their certificates to the browser. So they knew there was something amiss, but at one time, thousands of users from 300,000 IP addresses got alternate Google pages shown to them. 95% were actually from in, in Iran. And so at, after DigiNotar, there was major concerns of distrust 
between the browsers and the certification authority, which has changed the landscape. And they became a lot more controlling around what to trust and what not to. So where is that, where's the clutch point in the trust? Now, has anybody actually uh, gone into the certificate store on your laptop? You're familiar with the certificate store. If you're not, I'm going to talk to you about that. So in Windows, a, uh, your software, the, the operating system comes, and the browser comes baked in with something called the certificate store. And included in the certificate store is trusted root certificate authorities. And there are entries automatically baked into that. And if I click on root certificate authorities, you will see that the three root certificate authorities in the, in the examples that I had made earlier are all in there. And if you're a certificate of certification authority, you want to be in that store. Why? Because every certificate that you issue or gets issued downstream are automatically trusted and said secure. And if you don't have that, then you're basically out of business. So here is the point where the browser really has control because they will manage the governance of what cert certification authorities will get in the trust store. And right now, Google is not wanting to get semantic. They want to pull semantic out of all of this. And that's a challenge for them. So how, you know, what is the governance managing the, the uh, opportunity to get into the trust store. Well, they use a trust model, which is, which is used to independently use auditors and audit accrediting body against standards that certification authorities use. So this is just the generic referential trust model that can apply to any type of uh, standard. Matter of fact, if I, if I plug in ISO 27001, something that you're probably, most of you are familiar with, they use this trust, you know, trust model, because ISO is the accreditation body, they issue the criteria, and in this case, PECB does management certifications of applicants, and it also accredits auditors. Okay, so they're using this trust model, and then relying parties can rely upon the, the criteria against that is being used by the applicant because some auditor audited it and some accreditation company accredited it. So now you're kind of or oriented into something that you're familiar with. Now, in the website security trust model, this is the landscape for governance. A body called the CA Browser Forum, the Certification Authority Browser Forum, is a very powerful organization. And they, they have developed criteria that has been used by an a, a audit accreditation organization called WebTrust to audit and, and compel certification authorities to comply with. So they have baseline standards. They have extended validation uh, standards. They, as you can see, it's extended validation and baseline and, and also other standards just dealing with the operation of a certification authority. And WebTrust, which is run by CPA Canada, actually accredits auditors to audit against a standard that the CA Browser Forum will accept. My firm is one of eight firms in the United States that's accredited to issue web, web trust seals. And that's the web trust issues the seals to DigiCert. And then browsers and website users can have comfort that at least the certification authority has, uh, has complied with this criteria and has been audited against the standards. Now, wouldn't you think that that's enough? That's not. The browsers don't take this uh, 
they want to do more against certification authorities to ensure that the right certificate is issued to the right website. So they have other things in place because they don't necessarily completely trust this model. And they have created a blockchain of every certificate issued. So every certificate, if you want to comply with cert certificate transparency, you have to uh, you have to log all of this all the certification authorities have to log every certificate on this blockchain log. Now in black is how it operated before cert uh, certificate transparency. Server operator, you purchase you purchase a certificate. And then the CA did its validation, whether it's you know, the domain or the organization and other things. And then you know, it would issue a certificate. And then when the browser went to access that website, it would validate that the SSL certificate was in place during some TLS handshake. And then the browser makes connection with the server and the SSL certificate encrypts all the data. Well, that wasn't enough. So Google actually drove the uh, development of certificate transparency, and now it, it has to be a, you know, at least a few terabytes in data, and it requires certification authorities to create a pre-certificate and get it logged with the log server using a timestamp so that when the browser validates the timestamp during that handshake, you know, they can be assured uh, that the certificate is valid. So that's one sense to go beyond the trust that currently exists in the governance model. Now graphically, you know, it's represented this way. So they have this, it used to be just we're issuing a certificate to a, to a website and then we have the handshake. Now we have this log server with this, with this timestamp. And there are mechanisms in place embedded in with blockchain type of technology where there is auditing and monitoring to ensure that the audit proofs in something called Merkle trees to help verify that the certificates are in the log. So that's greater assurance for the public who's accessing these websites. But that's not enough for the browsers. The browsers dictate other and additional requirements to certification authorities through their policy. The, if you can go to micro, uh, Mozilla Root Store policy, and Microsoft has a policy, and Google has a policy, they have requirements that go above and beyond web trust requirements. Matter of fact, this is, this is how they govern getting into the web, getting into the certificate store. In their policy, Microsoft states the following. Microsoft will determine at its sole discretion which CA certificates are included in the program. They won't charge a fee, that's all good and well, but they reserve the right to not include a CA in the program for any reason or no reason at all. And such decisions are at Microsoft's sole discretion. I don't know. Do you think that's fair? This is very. This is the dictatorship here. But this is this is the change in governance model that's existing today. And here, not only do you get into the search store, but if you want to stay in the search store, you know, Microsoft may exclude the CA for the program if you're not complying with its policy requirements. That's not enough. So Mozilla, in their efforts, they, they, for as a representative of all the browsers, have decided to take on the responsibility to check and make sure that all certification authorities and downstream issuers of publicly trusted websites have web trust uh, audits and have disclosed their policy and procedures on the internet. And if you don't, you're going to go on this list. And this list is public. You can go there, you're getting to this website. And so they are going above and beyond 
what is required uh, you know, to do so. So the question then comes down to, uh, well, the question comes down to should the browsers govern internet trust? And that's a, well, maybe they should. I mean, they're the visible face. You go to the browser, you didn't even know possibly who certification authorities are. You're, you're looking at the green bars, that means I can trust the browser. They're the ones telling me. They have the name recognition. They rely on CA performance, and there have been aspects where the CAs really didn't comply very well. They have the compute resources, terabytes of data for this certification certificate transparency, and they can now have the leverage to get in and out of a certificate store. But on the other hand, are they really independent? They're not certification authorities, and, that, and, and those entities are the ones that were designed to build an internet trust. They're not auditors, and you know, we're, as auditors, we're all very trustworthy. They are very, they're competitive, and they are commercially motivated. But really, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, their fairness can be questioned. So the question is, is who can really be fair, impartial, and represent the right of the internet community? I really, I suggest one individual, the first internet judge. <laughs> So thank you for attending my presentation. I think we have time for a couple of questions, if you would uh, be interested to ask them. So if you don't have any public questions, I'll be around here, and you can uh, chat with me after, and we can have a discussion. So. So, you know, in the CA browser forum, if you, if you look at some of the traffic, the discussion in the blogs, they are, the, the browsers are dictating uh, where standards are going, and the certification authorities are, they're, they're, they're accepting it because they don't have much other choice. Um, I hope that changes, because I don't think it's fair. Um, I understand where the browsers are. I mean, they're relying upon another entity, and these organizations are very powerful. They think they can do the certification authority job themselves. And maybe that's where things are moving. I, you know, is, is Google wanna, wanna be their own certification authority? I, I don't know. So it is in flux at this moment. So, Good question. So the question is, you know, how does it play out? I think Symantec, if they want to be in this business, and it is a lucrative business for them, they'll have to comply to some degree. So the fact that they are talking to each other uh, is key. I think they have recognized that they've made errors in the past, and so I do think that they will live to see another day. If the company wasn't the size of complexity or importance of Symantec, Maybe they couldn't live to see another day, but there's business to be had. And so I think that uh, you know, they will comply with what, whatever agreement they come up with uh, so that they can sustain the market share that they have. Yes, sir. Well, it's all, it's all around trust, and so the, the average user uh, starts getting, you know, you see presentations by Kevin Mitnick and you see what can be done. You know, P, the average user needs to be more aware of specifically what gets validated. And I think that maybe that was an education for a lot of you to say, when you go to a website, how do I know that the company that is purporting to be represented in that, in that website actually is legitimate. So you want, it, you want legitimacy because there are bad actors that are portraying false identities and you need to, the average public, the, the average person that uses the internet needs to be able to, 
trust something or to be able to identify when I shouldn't. Jeremy brought up the, uh, the wireless access point. Do you see where this trust model can slide into these open wireless uh, access points or these different entities to validate the system that you see from day one uh, access points? Well, well, there actually is a number of certificates that are used for, for access points, and there's a, a separate standard that the Wi-Fi industry uses in order to protect Wi-Fi traffic. And so, you know, it's all, it's all a big hodgepodge. Actually, I think the biggest growth, as we were talking over lunch, is the growth of uh, the Internet of Things devices. And right now, Internet of Things devices are not prote necessarily protected by certificates, and they should. We should have all traffic on the internet encrypted. And so it's all around, you know, the ability to encrypt. And the challenge had been in the past is right now there is an organization called Less Encrypt, and they are issuing uh, certificates. It's, it's not going through this governance model, and bad actors are, are, are encrypting traffic because they're using the mechanism of, of certificates, but they're not valid. And you want to have a situation where you have genuine certification authorities that have gone through the rigor that I put in for audits to be able to sustain that, that governance model. Any other questions? Yes, sir. How well are their arguments? Well, there's certain things I can say and there's certain things uh, I can't say, but I'll tell you one thing. So the accusation on the 30,000 misissued certificates, they came, uh, the accusation was from delegated third parties that uh, Symantec uses to validate uh, uh, organizations. And so Symantec is going about and doing revalidation and will publish what their findings are very shortly, and we'll make it public. So the, the interesting thing is, how did Google know that those 30,000 certificates were mis misissued? They went through the certificate transparency model, and they were checking to see if these were legitimate or not. That's probably where they came up with the claim. I don't understand how they did, uh, but the, the results of that revalidation uh, will will be published, and then you know then the U people can make their own uh, determination whether they should you know they should be hung out to dry like Google wants them to do.